Hey guys, this is Mark Owings, and I'm your host for the Unbridled Life Podcast, where we have real, raw, and unreligious conversation to encourage and challenge men and women in their daily lives. Welcome to the Unbridled Life Podcast. So super excited to be here. I say that every time because I am. I've got my disco <laughs> ball back with me, Shauna, on behalf yes! of the Finally. Unbridled Life family. Is this a gift? There's your, that's I, actually Ellie's from college, I have and I goosebumps. saw that, and I was like, oh, oh wah, 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 wah. I feel seen. I feel loved. I feel known. I have goosebumps. Why do I have goosebumps? You <laughs> because I am a disco thing. ball. You are. Marky, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's going to be an amazing podcast That's now. Right. The disco ball is in the house. I got to, oh, I'm going to have to set it down, but yeah, this is you, awesome. You can set it down on the ground. <laughs> we'll have that roll off and be making a clank. But, oh, so yay. let me give you this. It's good to have Shauna back. She comes. I love co- being here. Thanks yeah. for having me. You're a rock star. You're a rock star. I love it. We're going to be talking. I want to be a heads up on this. Um, I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a hard hard podcast for maybe some of you to listen yeah because i'm about to get in your rear in my rear <laughs> and so we're going to be talking uh about a topic about judgment we're going to talk about forgiveness and we're going to talk about snapshots we're going to bring the word i just wrote a newsletter that's fixing to come out it's um, really good yes yeah, so um and i really believe this was from the lord and in this this has been painful sorrowful grieving for me, not only in myself, but what I'm seeing in the body of Christ. Right. So as we go through this, I, I would tell you, those who have ears to hear and eyes to see will listen to this and watch this and listen and listen out of all of the podcasts. I would encourage you, listen to this one. Meditate on this one, because when we meditate on the things of God, we will start projecting out and manifesting and creating the nature and character of God that's in him, not yeah. in you. You can't manifest this in yourself. It requires the presence of the Holy Spirit and a self-awareness. And I think I'm going to come back and do a podcast on self-awareness because we all miss the mark in self-awareness. Yes. That's you being aware and being self-focused. And I feel like, man, I've got all the trophies on my wall of being self-aware. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think we all, yeah. yeah. And there, there's the truth of this. So as we dive in, I want you to just listen and go through this podcast because I think really what is happening in the body of Christ right now is is God is inviting us. There's a lot going on, and there always is something going on with leaders, always something going on with the body of Christ, always something. Always an opportunity to well, forgive. Absolutely. <laughs> But I, I feel like, man, we're on the Salem witch hunt many times, mm. that we're yeah. ready to grab our pitchfork. I know in my past, I was quick to grab my pitchfork. Me too. And so uh, there is a story in the Bible of a man who owned a debt. Mm. And Jesus tells this story, and he said he owns a, he owes a debt that he can't pay, and the kingdom of God judges him and says, you have to pay the debt or go to prison. The person who owns this debt falls on his knees and asks for mercy, and the benevolent king, Jesus, gives mercy and clears this guy's million-dollar debt. Yeah. This guy walks out, knowing that he's forgiven, walks right out of that courtroom and thinks about a guy that owed him 200 bucks. Right. I don't know what the scenario is, but it's that. It's, it was very significant. Yeah, you got was, it right. Yeah, yeah. it's like... It was like ten bucks and ten thousand dollars. Yeah, but he tracks this guy down, holds him to him, and throws him in prison. The king finds out about it, and he gets in big trouble and thrown back into a prison. So, do I think that Jesus is throwing people in prison? I'm like, no. I think sometimes Jesus gives us over to the prisons that live within inside of us, in the flesh. Yeah, our flesh wants justice. One hundred percent. Our flesh wants appetites. Our yeah. flesh wants lust. Our flesh wants to eat. Our flesh, like you got people out there judging people for falling who are overweight. And listen, it's like, uh, have you looked into the mirror lately? 
And some of you aren't just heavy in the flesh. Some of us are fat in our flesh inside where no one else can see it. We weigh a buck oh five and live in these little towns. Why are you why are you already stepping on my toes? What did I do to you this morning, Mark Owings? <laughs> Well, I'm stepping on mine too. I mean, okay, and wait, I don't want you, I don't want to stop your flow, no, but keep going. before we do get too much into this, you gave a huge key. At least for me and I think for some of the listeners, he said there's no way you can do this on your own. Forgiveness is one of those things that uh maybe to some degree, maybe you could do some self-help and counseling or whatever. Maybe you could give you could forgive forgiveness uh, for some injustice. But this is a thing that if you do not invite the Lord all yes. the way in, it's impossible to forgive. And I had a dream last night. I think oh. this is so, this is one of those topics that it will be uncomfortable because you are going, your little brain is going to go, oh, well, he doesn't know. You can forgive all this, but not, not this one or <laughs> not this thing. Uh, but I had a dream last night that a lioness, it was a female lion, was sitting at my door, literally. And it just made me so aware of how this thing hunts us. Ooh. And forgiveness is there's no loophole, Mark. I was thinking about that on the way over. There's literally no loophole for for forgiveness. We find our little loopholes on all the little things that God I tells have. us. <laughs> yes, but forgiveness, it's not an option. So, and it's back to what you, what you, you were saying. Tell, so it wasn't just a line. Of, so what yeah. she, she doesn't know this, you know, I read this newsletter is Genesis four, seven, or she didn't remember is Genesis four, seven says sin crouches at your door. Oh gosh. I did not remember waiting to master you, yeah. but it is Jesus. It is God's desire that you master it through the power of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ in you through the Holy spirit. But so, you know, that sounds really churchy. Here's the deal. You could get eaten at your door 100. if you do not surrender all of us. And man, Chana, I was talking to you, you know, several years ago, I, this last three years, I, I realized that I was quick. I, I was so self-focused and insecure and rejected. I was quick to uh, be aggressive with my words. Okay. Uh, I always came back and apologized. I, you are, is, I will tell you, I am learning more about forgiveness and hard conversations because of you and Leslie. Y'all are, you modeled this very, very well, but go ahead. That's, Sorry. That's never been hard for me. Once I recognize yeah. it, I, I grieve it. But what God was trying to get me to do, and it took him clearing my table and me getting, being left alone for a minute. Yeah. And, and I'm grateful for that moment and season. God was trying to move me to the next level of not just repenting afterwards, but recognizing before it happened. Well, that's good. And some of you have received so much grace like I did from people mm -hmm. that maybe it's time for some people to walk away from you and give you a moment with yourself. Yeah. And that's what I had that I just was like, man, this is not good. And I know people out there listening, but man, you're a minister. No, I'm just a person. I'm just yeah. a person. Yes, I'm a priest. I've been called by God and all those things. But I think we have to, one of the systems that are broke yes. is we so idolize preachers, prophets, apostles, teachers. We've got our favorite deal. Listen, Lena, <laughs> if, you, if, if you are elevating somebody to yeah. that position that yeah. you are that disappointed, there may be something wrong with you. Oh man, I've done this. Yes, we all I, so bad. I, I want just needs to come across the screen. I have done this. As a matter of fact, my producer, I just uh, <laughs> I have done this countless times. Yeah. I'm not saying, but I'm I'm telling you that I've been in the presence of Jesus now, yeah. and He's starting to catch me because my mind will really loop mm -hmm. on the pain of what it is. But you brought up something. The key to this is God mm -hmm. said, you know. Jesus is with his disciples, and they're like, hey, bro, teach us how to pray. Yeah. You know? Of so, all the things they could have said. Yeah. and it, it, Which is weird. Yep. Because it's like, teach us how to heal people. 
Oh, right. Teach Show us, us those signs and wonders. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but they recognize it was because this cat went off into mm-hmm. the woods. Mm-hmm. And if you don't go to the woods and spend time in creation with the creator, you're not going to hear him speak. Yeah. And I, I really believe that. It can't just be the word. Because we can pull the word out and make it say anything. You could take this word and flip it around and say, oh, God wants you to have concubines. People have done it. David Koresh. Right. If you don't have the spirit of God speaking to you, this truth that goes with it, you'll have the right principle at the wrong time. And That's it's the wrong so principle. good. Oh. And we take the word of God and just start beating each other. Mm-hmm. And God's watching mm-hmm. through this process. But the key is, Shauna, they ask, teach us how to pray. And inside our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name of the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everything's going so good. Yes. <laughs> Forgive us as we forgive those who yes. trespass against us. Y'all, that's a uh-oh. Yeah. That's a that's a OS moment. Oh shoot. I don't know where you just went with that, but <laughs> Get your mind out of the gut. But I'm just saying, that's a moment where you do this. Wait a minute. The, God is saying, hey, I'm freely giving you. The scripture says, while you were still steeped in, in sin, sin, Christ went to the cross for you. Yes. Here's what his hope and heart is for all of us, that we will carry the key of forgiveness and give it. So a lot of people are like, well, Mark, you got to realize, man, there's consequences 100%. The law of the land is and should bring consequences. Please don't hear me saying that I don't believe there should be consequences, that we should just forgive everybody and go right. on. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be boundaries put around that you just, mm-hmm. there's some people that I just, you know, I, I don't like. And I don't, I'd be okay if I don't ever be around them again. Yeah. Shana, do you, do you have some of those people? 100%. That, and it doesn't ever make what happened, it doesn't make it right. No. I mean, we've been walking through some stuff in yes, in my have. private life, and I'm not even, I can't even say I'm really even in the process where I'm ready to forgive because there's so much. That's okay. But it doesn't, it doesn't make what happened right, but forgiveness is not an option. It's not. I've already an, chosen to forgive. And it's a yeah. process. It's totally a process. So please don't yeah. hear that I'm saying, hey, Someone did something to you that there, there's For not sure. a consequence. Yeah. You know, if you steal someone's business, there's consequences. If you slander somebody and a court case is brought against you, you're going to pay the court. Right. You know, but I'm just saying this. As the body of Christ, we don't look any different than the world. Sadly. Our marriages don't. Yep. And so, our, you know, our, our, our love for each other doesn't. Here's the whole thing. This is a command. This isn't an option. Exactly. And I want that highlighted is when Jesus says, you must forgive your enemies. He did not say, forgive your best friend. Forgive your children. Exactly. Forgive the enemies. That means who speak against you, betray against you, Mm -hmm. go back around, lie about you. And the one thing I've learned in this whole process is you never get to share your side of the story. And that's the, that right there is sometimes the most frustrating part about it. So, but you gave, um, and we made the, the, the conscious decision, which I really appreciate to not use anyone's name, yep. spiritual leaders, no. because it's so frustrating to me when people will get on their little YouTube and they'll start throwing leaders, spiritual leaders under the bus. And you have one of the best visual and you talk about it in the newsletter illustrations. You're probably going to get to it. I'm, I'm jumping coming. the gun of the broken. Oh, of the what broken it lo- arm. Yeah. Yes. So but I want you to tell that. I do. I want to say this in for you, for any leader or person out there. Sometimes I feel like we pee in our own canteen. <laughs> We pee in our own river source. When I did mission work in Africa, one of the things that people were sick and mm-hmm. and waterborne disease yeah. kills under the age of five. It's deadly. And I remember being in, I think it was Angola, and I saw this several places. I was in Angola, Africa, one of the worst places at the time rated for children. They're dropping like flies because of waterborne disease. And I'm at this river source, and my mind's trying to figure out But there's water here, but y'all, there's just trash. And then I see feces. Uh. And then I look upstream, and there's men urinating in the river. Mm -hmm. And I look down, and there's women washing their clothes. And there's children grabbing water to take into their huts. And I was like, 
people perish because they have a lack of knowledge and yes. wisdom. Yes. But we think, man, that's so stupid. How could they do that? We do the same thing when we speak not truth, and we've all done it. I'm here to tell you I've done this. You have done this, and I want you to know this. I, I want this to be so hard to hear. I want you to picture someone slipping a mic on you, someone putting a video on you. And I think people who video people or record people have low character, and it yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. But you are being recorded by heaven. You are being recorded by heaven. And the minute you think that you can start hurling stones at someone, I want you to put a recorder in your car, in your house, mic yourself up for one year, hand it over to a production and say you can use anything and put mm. it on YouTube. Ooh. Oh, all of a sudden we get <laughs> butt puckers. Even the best person I know, some mamas at home that are literally screaming in their bedroom, I wish she was never born. Mm. I hate them. You know, that in a moment, that's not really how they feel. But right. we do that. Yeah. So what I talked about in this Woo. newsletter that's going to come out is, listen, I do believe that this is a word that God is judging the house of God. Because we are in the middle, for some context, of some pretty big, significant okay. situations. Yes, of leaders that we, like you said, we put them on pedestals because sure. we want a king from the beginning of time. Yeah, we, so, we removed Sammy out of this. But I'm going to tell you, the, the reason this this podcast will live in eternity yeah. is because just give it another year and it'll be someone else. Absolutely. That it, this keeps happening. So I say that, hey, the system's broke, and that's not a slam on pastors, leaders, mm -hmm. prayer church, mm -hmm. business people. This is happening all the time in the business community mm -hmm. inside of Hollywood. My question is this. Hollywood seems to forgive better than the church does. Yeah, they do. And it, it's just like we, we're... We seem surprised mm -hmm. that people do this. Listen, the Bible says that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We've yeah. all sinned. Again, I know that there's consequences in the law land, and I'm not going to set myself up as the judge of that, and I'm encouraging you. You, you, you're, you're making a very dumb move, and you're peeing upriver where your children are drinking from your well, and I've done it. I've, that I've, is a great visual because I, as you were saying that, I was like, that's what we do in our own homes. Ooh. You know, when we start talking or, or not even, we don't even, uh, model true forgiveness in our own homes. Yeah. So keep telling, keep talking about the visual. So here's the visual. So I've heard this said in prophets and people come out and says, God is starting to bring his judgment on the house of the Lord. And oh. they use that voice. Yeah. That's a style. That's not God. God don't talk like that. He's really cool. He's got a South Texas little <laughs> twang to me. I'm just kidding. But here's, here's what I really believe. I studied out a long time ago, and I think it was the number 11, and I was studying this number out, and one of the definitions for 11 was judgment, yes, but in the form of a doctor doing something. So let me give you the analogy. When a doctor, let's just say Shauna's a doctor. She's oh, a I like it. Dr. Shauna. Dr. And Disco Ball. Okay, it, I like it. it. Yes. Yeah. And I trip and fall and hurt my arm, and I'm pretty convinced. I think I broke this. This yeah. is really in pain. And I go to Dr. Shauna's office, and I let her look at it, and she begins to judge the injury of the arm. And she said, Mark, I think we've got a break here and it could be a hairline fracture. Then she x-rays and says, Mark, here's where the break is. And determine on how bad the break is. We may have to go in there and do surgery and put scru uh, screws and plates. We may cast you or we may do all the above. Mm -hmm. But the purpose behind that judgment is to define where it's broken and how to fix it. So here's the deal. When God brings judgment to the house of the Lord, it's to heal and to align. And God's calling us right now to a maturity, all of us, me included. I feel so unworthy to bring this message. But I want you to know, if you're listening to this podcast, you've never shared anything that you need to share with your mom, your dad, your friends, your family, your coworkers. Every person in the world should listen to this message. Why? Because it's the message that we have where the cross of Christ and earth come together and we see how difficult it is to live out in our flesh 
what God means to be done in the Spirit. So he wants us to be doctors. When we bring judgment, it's with the heart of healing. I worked with a guy uh, a couple of years ago who fell Mm -hmm. in in a a church, and it it was a pretty severe fall, Mm -hmm. and it went for a... Kind of a link. When you say fall in a church, what do you mean? Uh, like adultery. a more a moral failure. A moral, moral yes. failure. Yeah. And everyone wanted to kill him. Mm-hmm. And my deal is, I didn't want to kill him. I want to love mm-hmm. on him. Yeah. And it's like I I understand how we can do this. Now I'm not saying that I understood all of his decisions. Right. And you go, who is this? I go, well, there's been like 20 of them. Right. Don't um, try to. Yeah. Don't try to figure this out. And mm-hmm. no, they're not from Texas. Right. Um. So I I just go, but they're all over. Leslie and I have opened our home up to these pastors and their mm-hmm. wives to come and minister to them and bring judgment to where it's broken, why it's broken, what are some of the roots. People have done that for Leslie and I. Yeah. Leslie, a couple of years ago, I had some broke places in my arm. Yep. And I needed not people. I needed to get into the sanctuary of God and allow him to start talking to me. And he called them mindsets. He said, you have some broken mindsets. It's a reformation. It, it is. It is making the crooked ways straight. And that is literally where we are in the Ecclesia Church. So you're saying it in such a beautiful way um, because I, I have heard this message and it breaks my heart when it's the voice of mm, condemnation and get them and da da da. I'm like, but it's always the kindness of the Lord. Yeah. It, it, and I just want to keep bringing this up to to everyone. King David did not wake up one day and said, I am going to screw up my entire family. Right. Sacrifice one of my kids. Yeah. And just screw up my life. No, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. The Bible says that at a time when kings went to war, yep. David was on his balcony and it was there that he saw Bathsheba mm. showering naked. And he thought, Woo, she looks good. Second mistake, he sends for her. Third mistake, he sleeps with her. Fourth mistake, he tries to clean it up and have Uriah come back in town. And Uriah is so righteous, he won't sleep with her because his brothers are out at war. And what's David's answer to this? Murder. Right. And let me tell you, it's your answer. It's been my answer and it's been her answer that we murder people with our words. Yeah. And I want to publicly just say, man, I repent. Yeah. For every word that I've said. Mm. In every word that we've said is the body of Christ, That's because good. when we speak against each other, we're speaking against God's sons and daughters. And so I, I want to go back to your dream for a minute. You had a lion, a lioness crouching at your door, but there was something else that you saw of people. I knew we were not here in America. It was like we were on vacation and I, it felt like Africa Okay, and it, there were, I could see, um, I knew there were like men, but they were armed cause they were native. They were, uh, they knew lions roamed around. So it's like they had the guns and they were, they were ready and we didn't. So when she told me that dream, here's what I, I got out of this. I, 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 we need to recognize that sin is scratching at your door. I don't know what your what your line looks like. I know some of what my my line has to look like. Yeah. But I think those represent intercessories, prayer, and people who are prepared with the weapons. Come of on, God. Mark Owings. So Corinthians tells us, yeah. hey, our weapons are not of this world. They're to tear down vain imaginations, to bring them to the obedience of Christ, meaning we're supposed to bring them to Jesus, and Jesus steps on the neck of the, of the crouching lioness or lions that try to attack us. But we, we need to move into a moment of self-reflection before you judge, before you say anything. You need to look and evaluate your life. Are you being the judge of healing? Well, let me even... Okay, I can't believe you just said that. You Oh, my gosh. Okay, so as soon as you said that... I just started thinking about how quick I can be on social media or I can be whatever. And I can hear either, you know, one of the situations with church, you know, leaders or political, especially right now. And what you can do immediately is say, Lord, 
I pray for this. Take their name before the throne. Uh, what would we do in this country, in this world, if we immediately took people's names before the throne and just said, Lord, I don't know the full story. I'm not going to step into judgment. Yep. Yeah, but oh, Father, would you just be with them and use this for your glory and use it, you know, for their good, make the broken ways. Clearly there's something broken in this person. Yep. That's not a bad judgment. We no. can easily no. go, okay, well, clearly. Yeah. That's evil. That's yeah. twisted. That's, Hey man, that should not have happened. But go straight into, and it doesn't even have to be a long prayer. Just take it, take them before the throne. That's really good. That oh, was really good. But I, I found in my own life in this, God was recently speaking to me and I wrote this thing about self-awareness. Yeah. And one of the first steps in addressing confrontation, listen, if you know me or been around me ever in 35 years, I ain't scared to con confront somebody. I don't care who you are. Right. I don't care if you're a president. If I, if I see it, I'm bold enough to say it. That's a good thing. But there was some immaturity in my boldness because I didn't have a prayer life that matched my confrontation, which meant my confrontation hurt people. Mm -hmm. It didn't help people. Many times it left people, they were doing it out of, they didn't want to disappoint Mark. Yeah. And that was a correction of the Lord. So what he showed me is this step, pro, just a step that we should go to the minute that we feel that. That's where we go spend time yes. in the throne room, in the secret place, in the intimate place, and we begin to tell the Lord. The one place that you can vent and create a sanctuary. Listen, I've made this mistake of trying to create sanctuaries with people. They are not trustworthy enough to handle all of what you're going to share. Not even my wife, not even my children. The things that are intimate, the things me, only God can handle mercy and judgment in the right context. So when I go and I just vent like, Lord, here it all is. Yes. He'll start saying, okay, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Yes. Let's, let's, you do see that this, mm -hmm. this is kind of, this is kind of Thor hammer. Yeah. This hurt. Yeah. Let's move this. Yeah. Let's move this. Now, are you ready to go and share with them in the way that I share with you? Yes. No, I still <laughs> want to get them. Get yeah, and I, I got some marriages right now that are listening to me that you're just like, you still getting your spouse and you're telling them all about the Bible and the Bible says this and you need to lead. Well, maybe you need to sit down so they can. Can I tell a quick story? Yeah. Because I thought about this on the way over. Um, you know, and I have to just be honest. I, I probably am all over the map. I can think of situations where I'm like, well, yeah, I'm going to forgive, but I'm not ready to forgive. I mean, just, yes. and yet at this, you can be all over the map with forgiveness. And at the same time, very bottom line, I choose to forgive no matter what it's, That's it's, the first it's step. yes. But there was a season in our marriage and for my marriage, divorce is just not an option. Come on. We don't put, we've never said it. We don't put it on the table. It is not an option. We do not have a loophole. Uh, but Kyle was, um, there was something that was just an habitual issue and it was over and over and over. And my biggest frustration was I was like, well, quit lying and saying you're not going to do it again and Beca this is something because so clearly you're clearly you're going to do it again. But you know, the day that the Lord, I heard the Holy spirit say, if he never changes, if he never changes. And my response was, I choose to forgive and I choose to go, okay, like if this never gets better, I'm not leaving. I'm going to do it. And guess what? When that, when I made that declaration and kind of put that stake in the ground, I will forgive him every single time if he does it for the rest of our lives. Then it was very short after we he got like free. That, Sean, yeah. we? No, we, we don't like that kind of love. No. Years ago, that's what he told me. He said, "You you don't like the way I love. That's why you're." Oh, resisting. it's a, oh, it's so. Upside I, down. I like the way he loved me, but I wanted him to go get them. Yes. And it's like, and I'm the biggest perpetrator. Yeah. So what I love about this, let's go back to the story of Cain and Abel. Let's go back to the beginning. So Cain and Abel, one brings this offering that is from the cows, and yeah. one brings crop, and God says, you brought me the fat of this. Cain gets so pissed off that he kills Abel. Yeah. So this is a good father. This is a good father. This is murder, by the way. The right. So Jesus doesn't pull no punches. 
And I, I do believe this encounter might have been Jesus in the Old Testament Ooh, dealing with them. It's good. I, you need to realize everything in the Old Testament is pointing to Jesus, not only to come. He was already there. So he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. He was the word that spoke this into existence. When you say, and God spoke, that was Jesus. Yeah. So uh, probably Abraham on the burning bush, I mean, uh, up Mo on the mountain with oh, yeah. I Isaac, was probably Jesus. Mm -hmm. Moses with the burning bush. People don't realize it's like Jesus didn't show up to the New Testament. Not true. So here's the deal. He looks at him and he says, hey, listen, where's your brother? And he says, and th this is how repentant he is. And it kind of sounds like us sometimes. What am I, my brother's keeper? Yeah. Well, he knew where he buried him. Yeah. And and God says to him, hey, even the rocks will cry out. I got you videotaped, son. Yes. I've been watching every move you make. You think you're juking Jesus? <laughs> you're not. And here's how he deals with him. He They begin this dialogue, and it's probably like, you didn't accept my offering. Yeah. And, 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 and God says to him, look, if you do what's right, will I not bless you too? Yes. He says that to him after he murdered his son, his brother. Mm. And, but there is a consequence. He sends him out and marks him. Yeah. And he was afraid that the people out there were going to kill him. God marks him so much that people would not touch him. Yeah. So God still offers still protection. protection. There's yeah. still consequences. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But what I see is a loving father, if you do what's right yeah, and you walk in the spirit, in the nature and character of who I am, yes, will I not bless you? Yes. So I wanted so to just good. read a couple of just scriptures uh, to you and, and listen to these. And your forgiveness might lead to someone else's freedom. Yeah. And, and I, it will. Look at what Nelson Mandela did. Oh, yeah. He forgave and started and, and stopped what would have been another mass massacre in Africa. Yeah. And I don't think Mel Nelson, I've said this before, I don't think he knew and walked with Jesus. I don't know whether he did or didn't. But forgiveness is a principle that comes from heaven that was created by God. That's good. It, it is a principle that comes. It is this truth that comes from heaven. And you need to hear me. A lot of people hear this. You can call heaven to earth, but you can't call earth to heaven. And we keep trying to take earth and make it part of heaven. And God's like, that is not my way. You have no right not to forgive your spouse, your children, your people. There may be boundaries put up for a season. I think when I was sharing but with the you, rights, you yeah. said something like, hey, I, I got someone in my life I'd be okay never seeing again. True. Well, all of us, <laughs> here's the litmus test. If Jesus came to you in a dream yeah. and says to you, Sean, I want you to go to their house, and I want you to deliver this word, yeah. and I want you to bring them $5,000, and I want you to serve them. Yeah. If your answer is never seeing them, you have never really truly known him or you're in a state of such disobedience that your ways have become God higher than God's ways. And there's no way around this. God just keeps hitting me with it. It's like, no matter who it is, if he speaks, I have to go and share. And that doesn't mean they're going to welcome me at the door. Yeah. I may have to leave my, I may say, Hey, it's me. Clunk in the door. <laughs> but you I were leave. obedient. I, Hey, their response to me doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And you can't help it if someone's living in such narcissism. And I hear this flipped around all the time. Well, they're just narcissists. If you said that, you probably are one. Mm. Let me hit you right Ooh. in the mouth. <laughs> because we all have spokes of narcissism. And I've met a few people that had more spokes but I got my own spoke and so do you. So you need to wake up and quit saying that. God didn't say that you get to leave just because an individual is walking in that. He's saying, are you going to choose to walk in my spirit? Here's the other thing yeah. that happened, Shauna. In Romans chapter 7 deals with this. We pull a scripture out and it says, do not commit adultery. Right. It's like, hey, I know one of my friends is in this. Shouldn't I go and tell them? Or worse, someone's living in fornication. And that could go in the homosexual community, and that can go in the heterosexual community. I'm not going to back up from all that stuff at all. Right. It's wrong, both equally wrong, because there's a reason why I put that there. But someone asked me recently, I know one of my friends is living in adultery, and they know the truth. I need to go to them and tell that. 
Well, that's like telling a drunk person they need to quit drinking. Right. So here's my encouragement to them. I said, you have taken the letter of the law and you're trying to apply that to them. Yeah. Here's the deal. How about love them and how about take a step? The first Mm -hmm. step is go work this out with Jesus until that you can lay yourself and surrender yourself so down that you can represent him. Number two, you go to that person in love and truth. Number three, you're willing to wait and be still. Number four, you're choosing to love. And number five is the big one. You're choosing to pray for them every day. That was the step I missed. Mm. I'd go confront, move on. Mm. No, when you choose to confront, you're also signing up to make them on your prayer window. My window in my bathroom is covered now, not because I'm going to confront people, but he's teaching me, Mark, you can do more in prayer than you ever did on a platform. And God can do more through prayer than he can ever do through a prophecy. He can do more through teaching, more through everything. I'm seeing now that prayer can trump all those things (laughs) because it transcends dimensions, times, and we're using the power in the right way, the currency. But many of us have been using our kingdom currencies, Mm. our gifts, to throw stones, to judge in any season. It'll be next year. There'll be something else. All I do now is grieve because I know how I've messed up. I know how you've messed up. I know how my friends have messed up. But so let's listen to what the Bible says and and check this out. There's three things that I see that God does this. And I'm going to come back and do this for you because this is a teaching. And for some of you who are riding the fence, you don't know whether you want to do Jesus or not. I want to remind you, you can't come to Jesus unless he picks you. So you can read it all you want to. Unless he's drawing you, you aren't coming. So you can play around at the fence and still keep doing what you're doing. It's until you surrender and said, I'm yours, do what you want. It's when you come to the place, and we've all come there. I remember being there at almost 20. I don't know if I was 19 or 20. I was probably 20. And I've always said, I I don't really know exactly when that was. But when I came to Jesus, I said, look, what is, I look like Swiss cheese. (laughs) There wasn't much left of Mark. And I said, look, I've screwed this up. And if you're willing to take me on. I'm yours. He made me whole. And he's still filling in holes right now. Yes. So, but I found three Uh. things. God really applauds faith and believing. God really applauds when we walk in trust. And God really, really applauds when we walk in obedience. When we have to sacrifice. And let me tell you one of them, Sean and I. Now, we were in a worship service, and I couldn't really understand this worship song. And I said, Lord, I can't read the words. You know, I I can't remember if I didn't have my glasses on or the the words weren't up there, and I couldn't understand what they were saying. It was a beautiful song, melody. I said, I can't enter in. I can't feel it. And he said, Mark, would you simply just move in with spirit and truth? You don't need your feelings. Mm. Some of you have been so offended by your feelings. Come on. That you Uh. have rejected them, therefore rejected Jesus, and therefore live in isolation. You are in isolation right now, and you can't receive. See, Dead Sea means this, river in, no river out. That means you're taking all the water. You want to stop the water flow into your pond? Just not forgive people. Oh, exactly. I mean, the water comes, and then that pond becomes stagnant oh, and it's corrosive horrible. and dangerous, and the fish die Isolation, there. yep. no, yeah, all, all of that. So he's moved by those three things. So just listen to this. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says, mm. otherwise you're only fooling yourself. Mm. That's James one twenty two, and I want every one of these scriptures up on the screen. Faith isn't simply feeling it. It is manifesting in our obedience to God's word and trusting his promise. To be intimate with Jesus, you can't withhold any part of your life, especially forgiveness and offense. We are called to surrender fully, believing in his plan and trusting his timing and obeying his command, whether we feel like it or not. Yeah. So here's another one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans Mm -hmm. Mm 3.23. That means you. I would encourage you right now, driving in the car or wherever you are right now, Mm -hmm. I don't care if you Mimi, Papa, Nana, Gigi, uh, Babalu, Bear, (laughs) uh, you're sitting at college, you're so offended what happened two years ago. Let me tell you, the first step for you is how about you roll down your window and drop your stone? 
Yeah. Drop your stone. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son and daughter whom he receives. Listen, if you're going to walk with Jesus, you're going to be getting corrected. Yep. And it's in love. And I hope that you feel corrected in love. I'm not beating you up because I feel in the same boat. But this has come out of this 90 days of prayer for me that I realize, oh, my gosh, I'm peeing in my own canteen. Yeah. And I want to jump in and just say, you know, sometimes if you will really let the Lord in on this and say, okay, Lord, help me to forgive. A, he will. Um, but sometimes there's been situations where I'm like, why do I have to go? I felt like I was in a season where I was constantly being the one to have to go. Always forgive. Always, always forgiving. You know what? Start. I don't want to say start small, but maybe just wherever he highlights today, maybe it was just something you said to someone, just go and, you know, ask for forgiveness because this is the bait of Satan for all of us, Ooh. the unforgiveness. John Bevere wrote a good oh, book. Oh yeah. I thought and about I, it. And I'm not saying all of John's, I don't, I don't know. I hadn't read all of his books, but that it's is a, good a one. sobering book of the fear of the Lord. And I believe that's what we're missing right now yeah. is the fear of the I Lord. I do too. Not that... He's going to bring the judgment. How can he break through the judgment, the blood of Jesus, and and crush us? That's yeah. not God's heart, but he does want to bring correction and alignment into our life. And some of you know that you're in a season of your life that you go, man, I know I've compromised and hardened my heart yes. in this area. And it might not be forgiveness. It may be sexually. Oh, Marky, wait, I have to say this. You just said harden the heart. Listen, we are in... Where is the scripture? I looked it up. We'll find it for you. But it says, um, basically, in the end times, the, the hearts of many will grow cold. This is where we are. And this is why it's so important. This is how we do yes, it. Yes. But this is what's going to set us apart is our love. And how do you keep the soil of your heart um, tender and what it, fertile and yes. just not that hard crusted ground is to forgive. And you know who the hardest person for me to forgive? 100%. Myself. And man, don't let that slide by. God just isn't offended by you yeah. not forgiving. He's offended when you do it to you. Yeah. So that's a really good point. How do we, the Bible says, Turn up the fallow ground, the hard yeah. ground. Take a plow through it. Well, listen, when you plow through your heart and you start dealing with you, listen, there are so many people. If you want to get away from people, get away from people who talk about other people who can't forgive and are still living in the past. When you ask them, when did this happen? Yeah. They go, oh, this happened three years ago. This was five years ago. Listen, I lived there with a couple of people. like, And I wasn't angry about it. I was hurt. I was just, I, I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. But it, I did know what to do. I didn't like the answer. Mm -hmm. Forgive them. Mm -hmm. Forgive them. And listen, if there's a boundary put up, it should be for the benefit or both. And so I want to give some practical things on this as mm -hmm. well. When we talk about forgiveness, we talked about offense, talk about all this. Y'all, I'm not saying you're supposed to forgive somebody in a day. Right. But let's get real. It may take a year. It may take two years. I would say after two years... Um, I, I'm going to question your willingness to go be with him. And it took me longer than two years. I would only go to Jesus and wouldn't allow him this place of my heart. Yeah. And I had some dreams, but I was blocking my dreams. And some of those dreams are come true. I'm not willing to share those right now, but oh, but we true. will. We will coming soon. <laughs> but I was blocking my own dream because I it, it wasn't that I was willing. I was so broken and so hurt and so rejected that rejection and insecurity were blinding me so much yeah. that it kept me through that. And God was gracious to walk me through this process. It took longer than two years. Now I just grieve. I, I grieve. And one of my friends, Todd, taught me this. When we grieve, we show value for what's lost. Yes. And I am That's grieved, beautiful. Yeah, grieved. yeah. And so here's some practical things on this is, hey, you have some broken relationship and they ended the conversation and there's not an open door. You know what? We, we, we've experienced that. Totally. But we just pray. Yeah. 
we pray and we pray for these people every single door. Mm-hmm. They they need to take a step unless God tells you to take a step. Remember, you can read your word, but you got to be in tune with the spirit because there's sometimes it's going to feel so uncomfortable to go do and they're not going to receive you. That's not the mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Listen, I'm not sure the fallow ground really wants to receive the plow that's coming and turning it up. Yeah. If you could put emotions to soil that is hardened, that you take a big old plow and go through that, I'm sure it's screaming out in pain. What are you doing? I'm comfortable here. I'm uh, finally in my safe box. This is the most uncomfortable you can ever get is uh, with is. this topic. Yeah. So when God starts arguing yep. into your past, you know this, we know this, and this is what we do at Fully Alive and Fully Connected. And by the way, if you want to know, go to our website at elevatehim.com. Fully Alive is for individuals, fully connected for couples. We've got those events out there, and they're life-changing, not because of who we are, but because of the presence of Jesus. Well, and because it's like someone gives you a roadmap. Some people are listening, and you just rattled off your process, and they're like, and you're going to give them some steps, but they're like, they can't even fathom life without this it becomes such a mountain in people's life and when you go and you sit with people who understand they've been it's they literally have a roadmap to help you and i've watched it i've watched jesus come in and in a minute set someone free it's beautiful. from years of bondage of unforgiveness yeah yeah it's, it's nuts and we all have it and I just want, don't want to run with people that carry stones. Anymore. Yeah. I just, I just don't. That's that's kind of my litmus test. It doesn't ma- mean that you don't have venting moments. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, I had a friend for years. He's just a faith guy, and he wouldn't mind me sharing this. His answer to everything is just claim Jesus. Just claim Jesus. No, there's a time that you're going to vent. And I think that we are amazing at keeping snapshots of people that vent. They say something, but that's not what they meant. Yeah. They're in pain. Yeah. And we've got to learn to sit and be still and love and listen to the Lord. And it's not time to tell them, dude, that's horrible. No, your job is to pray and to really walk that out. So here's some practical steps. Get home, grab a piece of paper, and just start venting to the Lord. You can use any language you want, regardless of what the church has told you. He gets it. I mean, you can let it rip and let it rip. Just keep writing your emotions down. Just, this is how I feel. This is what I think they do. This is what I think about that man or this woman or this husband or this wife or these kids, whatever. Now, you're going to do that for a season. And then when you feel like you have accurately written down all of your emotions that, and there's a lot. Yeah. Like you wake up and go, I didn't even say it the way I want to. I, this is how I really feel. Go through all that and then go into the presence of Jesus and say, will you start sifting through this? Yes. And one of the things that helped me is I started thinking about someone, if someone ever gets a hold of my journal. <laughs> And my kids, I'm leaving them all to them. Why? Because I want to let them know that dad was not perfect. And I want them to see the vent and the moments I went through, but I want them to see the roadmap of the journey. Yep. So what I started picturing is sitting down with an innocent five-year-old little girl and reading my vent Mm -hmm. to her and her doing this. Mr. Mark, (laughs) that's not good. And I go... Even a five-year-old can right. pick up like that. That's mean. Yes, that's mean. Yeah. And so when we get to that point of that's mean, we wouldn't read this to our little kids. Yeah. And we take it into the presence of God and go, "Will you take me on a journey?" And and I tell him every time, "Be gentle." Like he's not going to be gentle. With I know, but you. But still... I'm scared of it oh, because yeah. I think that he's. Listen, God's not going to body slam you. You're not going to not get into heaven, all, all those things. He's not mad. He's not. But l- let me tell you, he does grieve at the way that we've done this. Yeah. And so think about the woman caught in adultery. Oh. And it, it, the law says stoner. That story. The word says stone her. Yeah. So just if They're you want to idolize this thing. Right. And yes, I did say there are some people that idolize the letter of the law. Go read Romans 7. 100%. It, it, will, t- mm-hmm. it will tell you. Mm-hmm. It's Romans 6 or 7 where he says and goes through the letter of the law versus the spirit. Yeah. There is a spirit that goes with this book. And if you don't have the spirit, you'll never be able to read the book. And more importantly, the book will never be able to read you. So when we mm-hmm. when we do this, 
you look at this woman caught in adultery. Jesus kneels down. I've heard so many sermons about this. But Jesus says something. You know what? You're right. The law does say this. Mm. I tell you what, let's stone her. He who is without sin cast the first stone. The Bible says that old people drop their stones first. first. They're like, oh, oh crap. I've been, <laughs> that, that's what old age gets you. You've been along, uh, it does. alive long enough to go. It does something. I think what he was telling them is they were like video recorders. Yeah. He just said, go ahead, look at your rock. And yeah. remember that rock is your sin. And if you cast it, then you're saying it's okay if I cast my stone at you. Mm-hmm. And them old people dropped it, and then the younger followed. They might have followed out of peer pressure, but... And he looks at this woman and says, where are your accusers? Mm -hmm. And she said, they're not here anymore. Mm -hmm. He said, neither do I accuse you, baby girl. Mm -hmm. He said, now go and sin no more. I've heard preachers say, that right there is a call to holiness. Well, that... uh, I just want to tell that preacher, you cannot be holy. (sighs) You can't work your way into holiness. No. You can partner with God's holy le- holiness and let it manifest in and through you through the power of Jesus Christ, his resurrection, and the spirit that Come resurrected on. him. Yes. But we look at all the way through this. I feel like during this time, this is the word I want to release. The church is maturing. Right now, as we go through the rest of this year, which I believe that there's going to be in every year, there's going to be a climate of chaos in some way, shape, or form. In more the and more yep. until his return. Yep. Yeah. But he's turning it up and he's separating the sheep and goat. You're going to see really quick preachers, pastors, laypersons, businessmen, businesswomen, you're going to start to see who's got a light on them and who doesn't. Yeah. Because it's not going to be what they say, it's going to be what they do. Yeah. But again, let's give people the opportunity to vent and process, yep. to react, mm-hmm. and then grow in the response of the Lord, because mm-hmm. that's what the Lord has for us. Yeah. Final words from Oh, you. my gosh. Well, I, Mark, it's a lot. You. It is a lot. And I'm going to be honest. I did what I think the listeners, it's going to be hard. As I'm even sitting here, I've had thoughts of... Well, who are you to be doing this podcast? Because there's some areas where, oh my gosh, I could even cry. Like, have I done this well, Lord? I don't know. I mean, I think I've done it the best I can, you know, and I have caused hurt. Um, I have been hurt. And I just think like if we can just all see each other um, as broken You know, why am I so tender? I don't know, but I'm going to just let it because we really are. I think at the end of the day, we really all hurt little kids. We are. And if we would be a little more gentle um, with ourselves and with each other, I think we need to be careful, really careful of the portals. The portals are your eyes and your ears, and they get into our heart. And our hearts were created so delicate, honestly. Um, we were, he never intended us to have to endure and beat each other up. Like he didn't ever want us to get hard, our hearts to get hard. And so, um, yeah, I think my last words would be go on the journey. Mm. It is work. It is not easy. I will not paint this to be a flowery, you know, journey, journey at all. It is very messy. It's very intense. Um, but all you have to do to today and right this minute is say, Jesus, I say yes, and then let him, and he will do Come it on. in a unique, supernatural way for you. And what I know, uh, he, he, in his love, he'll, he'll never, he doesn't make it like he'll take you through the hard things, but he'll never shame you. He will never shame you. So, um, I'm proud of you. You you stayed with it. You got uncomfortable and you let truth into a, a place in your heart today. So my final words would be good job. Oh, it's great. My final words for you, for those of you who are willing to endure this hour of being in this message, a blessing's coming. Yeah. A blessing's coming. And she's right. It's, it's hard. Uh, but the, the greatest thing, is about forgiving yourself. And it wasn't until then, and, and it's still hard moments. I still mess up. I'm glad there's not a camera on me all day long. 
But the nature and character of God is so sweet, and he makes this covenant that I will never leave you or forsake you no matter what you do. I'm not sure our covenants are matching up with his, and he wants us, the body of Christ, I've been in Ephesians, he's talking all about a unity. Yeah. Paul, it's one of the letters that he wrote mm-hmm. in prison. Yeah. You think he was could have been pissed off like, right. I'm preaching the truth, <laughs> and I... I'm doing I'm a, this for you, Lord. I'm, right, <laughs> and I'm doing this, and my gift back is, oh, I get beheaded. Oh, beautiful message. But God oh. says you must decrease so that yeah. he can increase. And if you're in that season of your life, whether it's forgiveness, sexual sin, whatever it is, let me encourage you. God's not mad at you. He's not disappointed at you. He just simply wants you aligned because there's a better way that flows better blessings of water into your source that is cleansing and healing. And I think prophetically right now, there's some people that went, I am doing this. And that's a time to sit down uh, with your boyfriend or with a girlfriend or with, with whatever it is and just saying, hey, this isn't right. Let's go to some leadership and let's put some people around us that help guide us through this. Let's repent. Let's turn away. Repent just means, dude, I'm sorry we forgive me, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the minute you say forgiveness... I teach this at Fully Alive. The minute you say, Lord, will you, the minute you start to say, will, he's like, I already have. Yeah. That's not the issue. Yeah. So he's forgiven you. He loves you. I want you to listen to this. Like, share, rate, review. Go watch us on YouTube. If, you, if you've been listening to this on, on your podcast platforms, go, go help us out there. Go like so that we can grow in this, but help us share this. Thanks for joining us at The Unbridled Life, where we keep it real and raw. God bless you. Thanks so much for listening to the Unbridled Live podcast. We know your time is valuable and we hope we bring real and relevant content that helps you live that unbridled life. If you want to help us spread the message, you can rate or review the podcast on whatever platform you like to listen to us and share it with a friend or two. If you want to know more about who we are and what we're doing, head on over to theunbridledlifepodcast.com and learn more.